presentation is on pre-hospital emergency care systems, uh, looking at the utilization of ambulance services. And uh, when we're talking about pre-hospital emergency care system, is about because we know most of the emergencies happen out, outside hospital setting, especially mainly at the community level. And that's why my, my study is looking at the use of the emergency services. Next slide, kindly. A bit of introduction, emergency care uh, medical services is a system that organizes the aspects of emergency uh, care right away from the uh, out of the hospital environment up to the emergency department in the hospital. So uh, apart from um, an emergency care system being uh, looked at at the pre-hospital emergency care, we know that a variety of medical conditions also are addressed by the emergency care system, that is to include the disaster response and management of mass casualty incidents. 90% uh, of deaths and 84% of daily and adjusted life years are uh, around the world and due to emergency conditions. That was a study which uh, was carried out on 20, uh, 2015. Uh, a scoping review of published studies uh, and the great literature has noted that Africa accounts for about 90% of the global uh, trauma burden. Next slide. Um, out of approximately 45 million deaths, uh, 2.3 million are due to conditions that are potentially addressable by timely pre-hospital emergency uh, medical care. So a study which was conducted in 2017 noted that majority of emergency medical uh, services uh, system deaths are due to delayed response, lack of knowledge on identifying critical patients and how to handle them. So in low and middle income countries, emergency medical services system are generally fragmented and largely limited to transportation without protocols for field triage, standards of care, or communication to receiving facilities. Next. Uh, this fragmentation of uh, the this fragmentation leads to the lay public being left by their home to make decision on where to transfer their acutely ill patients. So uh, as, a, uh, as this study is looking in Nairobi in Kenya, so we're looking at Kenya as undisputed and strong need for a robust emergency medical services. Next slide. So despite the demand that has increased in Kenya on emergency, uh, emergency medical services, there are still, uh, Kenya remains underdeveloped and equipped and unsophisticated due to the lack of skills of professional. And this is, was a study which was carried on in was carried on 2011. So in order to have an effective and efficient emergency care service delivery, and timely access to emergency care in Nairobi County and more so Kenya at large, there is need to, estab to establish utilization pattern of ambulance services. Next slide. So this study was a descriptive, descriptive cross-sectional study that utilized both the qualitative, quantitative and qualitative research the study was carried out in Nairobi County, and the data was collected using in the fewer and administered some structured questionnaires and key in-depth interviews. A passive sampling technique was used for 39 key informants. Next slide. A simple random sampling technique was also applied for 101 community members 
from the 10 sub-counties held related in Nairobi County. And then a quantitative data was analyzed using NVMO. Uh, and quantitative data was analyzed using descriptive statistics by use of SP, S, SPSSS software. Findings were represented as frequencies and percentages. Next slide. So um, the, 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 the ambulances were assessed in categories of basic life support and advanced life, uh, advanced life support ambulances. And these ambulances were stationed in different areas. One, there are those who are dis, uh, uh, stations at dispatch center, and there were those who are stations at the healthcare facilities, that is the hospitals. So the total number of um, ambulances, um, the total number of ambulances at the dispatch center that were assessed were 21 and also 21 in the healthcare facilities. So those pers the, uh, ambulances which were um, met the Kenya, uh, Kenya Bureau standards criteria were for 41, that is the basic life support. And the 24 ambulances also were ISO certified then uh, when we look at the advanced life support ambulances, we'll, uh, we see that um, the, those who met, uh, the ambulances that met Kenya Bureau of Standards criteria were 41, and those who are ISO certified were 23. So the uh, total ambulances of 83 ambulances in Nairobi were assessed. Next slide. Uh, those, uh, uh, those ambulances which were at the hospital setting were also categorized in form of basic life support and advanced life support and also the, uh, ownership of the, uh, the ambulances. So we see in the, in the Nairobi County, uh, they had six um, basic life support ambulances and three advanced life support ambulances in a total nine. The Minister of Health at the national government, they had seven ambulances, and then the private sector had a higher number of 20 ambulances. That is the ones which were at hospital setting. Then the based, uh, faith based organizations had five ambulances. So the ambulances which were at the hospital setting were one. Next slide. So communication. Why communication is important is because about coordination and referral of the emergencies. So this study found us that all the ambulance service providers had separate emergency numbers operational 24 hours a day. And only three ambulance, ambulance services had short code toll free ambulances number. While service providers were, uh, other providers were, sorry, while other service providers were applied calling rates on their the, the emergency numbers. So that attracts some uh, changes when you are calling for emergency. None of the health facilities had short court straw free emergency number. So the emergency numbers were operated through the information technology system in the 50% of the ambulance services while the Rest 43% uh, um, used manual telephone system and 7% used, used both. Next. In publicizing of the images in numbers, we find that it was only done at 38.5 of car stickers, billboards, a uh, branding of ambulances. And, and advertising through the website had only been done at 16.7%. So the majority, 64% of the ambulance services and a dispatch center managed by independent agencies, while the rest and the ambulances staff receiving emergency calls directly at that 6%. So trained ambulance dispatchers were available in only six of the ambulance service providers while the rest used 
the trained personnel stationed at the hospital to receive. Like nurses received 44%, receptions were also receiving calls at that 5%, and EMTs 17%, and then doctors were receiving at 4%. Next. Next slide. Uh, when we look at the community and the pre-hospital emergency care, uh, 56 percent of the respondents in the field were aware of what medical emergency is, having either experienced or they had witnessed somebody, someone in an emergency. Majority, 90% of the respondents were aware of the role of an ambulance in emergency response. But and 70% of the respondents were not aware of the emergency conduct numbers for the ambulances. The most common emergency which was noted were accident at 55%, followed by breathing problems 23%. Next. Next. Okay. Um, this slide, uh, it's looking at the responders who assisted the different types of emergencies which were encountered. And we are seeing community members were the first to, rest, to assist in emergencies. And that is what was at 79%. So the community were the ones uh, helping in a bigger way. We can see where we needed the ambulances and um, emergency services. They were, they, it, it, they, they were rated at 5%. Next. Next slide. Okay, um, when we look at the means of transport used during the emergencies, majority we see 99% of all the emergencies needed transport to the hospital. But when we look at the way it was rated, taxis were at 28%, public transport 4%, we are seeing ambulances were rated at that 7%, motorbike 17%. So it's only that we were sure that 7% of patients were the ones we could, we, whom we could say they were transported under the care of medical personnel. Otherwise, the rest, the biggest percentage were at risk. Next. Next, thank you. Um, when we look at the means of transport and the time taken for response, we're looking at the WHO recommended emergency response time is within 15 to 20 minutes when a crisis has occurred. So we are seeing uh, the private cars and the neighbors and the motorbikes were able to respond to emergencies between 15 to 20 minutes. But while we see the right um, emergency services, they had an average of 40, 40 minutes. And even sometimes, because this is an average, there are times they could go beyond one hour before they reach to the emergency. Next. Next slide. So in conclusion, when you look at the WHO's recommendation for ambulance services, there is, we, the ratio we get is one into 7,000 or 100,000, uh, one ambulance. That is the population is supposed to serve. So with the 83 ambulances in Nairobi, these we say they were hand, uh, underutilized because the population in Nairobi County is approximately 45 million. Uh, it is a no, sorry, the population in Nairobi County is about 5 million. So, lack of well connected, reliable, there was lack of well connected and reliable dispatch system. Each emergency engines at their own coordination. So, the study also found out that it was noted that only three out of the 14 dispatch centers had a trough free number. Others, the rest, Patients are changed when they are calling. So uh, the, there was also low public awareness of emergency 
ambulance service numbers. So when they do not know the emergency numbers, so they, it was it was unlikely for them to be able to call the emergency operation center for help. Next slide. Thank you. Uh, so in also conclusion, most patients reached the hospital by private means, which delayed medical intervention. And that one was placing them at a risk of either death or medical complications. So my, most of the private ambulances were expensive because they charged between 2,000 to 20,000 uh, Kenyan shillings. So depending on the case, they were to refer to the hospital. So first responders were also noted, noted not to have adequate training on first aid and medical response. The lay public was also often left to decide independently whether and where to transfer their acutely ill uh, injured patients. Next slide. Next slide. Thank you. Recommendations. There is need to have a well-connected, reliable central dispatch system in order to improve on emergency response. Training the first responders on first aid is a key thing. And then creating awareness of emergency numbers to the public is very important. Establish an emergency response training program for the lay public so that they are aware what to do when they get an emergency and how, how they should, should they communicate. And advocate for insurance health schemes for ambulance services so that the, the charges can be taken care of by the insurance. And then also have collaboration of different free hospital emergency care service providers that can be adopted as an initiative to reduce emergency response time. Next. Yeah, this is a, just a, 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 snap, a, a snapshot for the advanced life support ambulances in Nairobi. Next. That's the end of the presentation. Thanks so much for listening to me. And if there is any question, you can raise it to me kindly. Thank you so much.